हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रभु हाउ मेनी पीपल डू वी हैव सो फार ओके ओके आई थिंक आई विल बिगिन ओम ज्ञान तिमरंद से ज्ञानंजन शलाकाया चक्षुर्मीतनाथस्मगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूपकदाम दधाति स्वादिक नमा विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिवेदातावामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषन्यवादी पश्चाचते शिणे वंशकौपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु भति भवानेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधार श्रीवासरी गौर भक्त बिंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वेलकम एवरी वन टू आर स्टडी ऑफ द नेक्टर ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन फॉर द भक्ति शास्त्री This is lesson number six, right? So today we're. I I thought I'd like to begin this morning. I was looking over the questions for the closed book assessment, and you know, can you all hear me? Okay. I'm not hearing you. Let me check what's going on. I'm not able to hear you. Now I can hear. Okay. Hari Krishna. Yes, Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Okay, so I was looking over the closed book assessment and you know you do have an exam to write. You have to answer be able to answer these questions. So I just want to check that you're keeping up with all of this. Right? If I ask Sri Chandrika Devi Mataji you know do you know what are the two what are the two aspects of tat tat karma pravartana hari krishna maharaj please accept my humble obeisances uh, tat tat karma pravartana means uh, following uh, regulatory principles yes and uh, secondly uh, for uh, chanting early morning uh, chanting early morning uh, reading bhagavatam Did you worship? Mm-hmm. So there's two aspects, right? Yes, Maharaj. The one one is yama and one is yama and yama. Right. Yeah. Yama is what? Uh, following uh, chanting a uh, minimum of sixteen rounds. No. I mean, uh, yama, yama is yama, yama, is, yama is, is the prohibitions. Prohibition means no. No meat eating. And no gambling, no illicit sex, no intoxication. Right, and the yam niyam niyam is following the rules and regulations like rising early, early morning, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting Hare Krishna. Right. Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. All right. And uh, what? Uh, who knows? We'll ask. Uh, We will ask someone. Let's uh, Krishna Vijay Prabhu. Krishna Vijay Prabhu. What are the four characteristics of a Madhyam Adhikari? Krishna Vijay Prabhu. 
Okay, Sri Garba Prabhu, can you tell us? Uh, yes, Mara. Uh, for characteristic of Madhyama Adhikari is uh, you are uh, loving the personal service unto Lord, then uh, become friend with the 40, then avoid with the enthused person, not interesting with uh, with Krishna consciousness, and uh, one is uh, giving only to uh, innocent people. Giving mercy to the giving mercy to the innocent yeah. or the ignorant people, right? Ignorant people, but they're interested. People who are interested, in, and we give mercy to them, right? Yes, my lord. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. All right, and who knows? No, oh, we didn't do that yet, did we? Three symptoms of an Uttama Adhikari. Acharya Nanda Prabhu, do you know? Three Krishna, symptoms. Yes, huh? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uttama, Uttama Adhikari is convinced, uh, and he also can convince others about this uh, Krishna consciousness movement. And then he, the way he thinking is everybody is a devotee, is the servant of the Lord. And he, he, he do not preach more, he cannot preach. Since he, he already, is, his vision is everybody is a servant of, already a servant, already a devotee of the Lord. Okay. He, he, does he chant Hare Krishna? Yes, Madam. He how chant Hare Krishna. How much? How often? I beg your pardon, Madam. How, of, how often does he chant Hare Krishna? How much chanting yes. does he do? Since he, he is convinced, I think he... Uh, he chant minimum 16 rounds. <laughs> yeah, at least. And he, then. he also chant more. Yeah, he chants constantly. Uttama Adhikari constantly chanting Hare Krishna. Hmm. Yes, and he's always thinking how to spread Krishna consciousness, how to expand the Krishna consciousness movement. He's thinking, always thinking like that, how to expand the Krishna consciousness everywhere. All right, anyone else? Any other things about um, Uttama Adhikari? And uh, he is very seriously, can I say Maharaj? He what? He is very seriously engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. Oh yes, but we wanted to know how he's engaged in devotional service. Which, uh, Glorifying the Lord, uh, his pastimes, and uh, uh, reading Bhagavatam. Hmm. All the time, right? All so, the time, yeah. So we said constantly chanting, constantly, yes, constantly yes. chanting. When he's not chanting, he's preaching, right? So like yes, that, Maharaj. like that, fully absorbed. Thank you very much. Yes. Dandat pranams, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna. He is never interested in uh, blaspheming others also, like devotees, wives, yes, and Yes, very good, right. That's mentioned that... it is very clean and pure. Right. Never, he won't criticize others. He, is not, he won't say anything bad about other people. So that's a good point. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Yeah? Okay. So it's good you're keeping up with these things. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Actually, Maharaj, there is an information, Krishna Keshav Prabhu is not able to love him. Oh, really? So some, yes, so, uh, so yes, Maharaj, so some members are waiting, kindly admit them to the class. Because we are the co-host, Maharaj, so you can admit them to the class. Okay, so, so you're going to admit them, is it? 
I'm the host. I'm the host, am I? Yes, Oh my goodness. Oh. So you have to add participants. We are waiting. All right. If somebody comes, if the, it will come on the screen, right? People. Participants list, Maharaj. It will come on the participants list. People entered the waiting room. Oh, it's yes. I view, right? So, yes, oh, there's Maharaj. quite a few people there. Should we admit them all? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Everyone? Yes, Maharaj, they are waiting. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. Okay. Actually, yes, Maharaj. They're all in? Yes, Maharaj, most of them are in now. Now they're at. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I just joined. Yes, welcome. Try to come Thank in time. Much. We appreciate punctuality. <laughs> right? I start on time. I don't like to start late. I like to start on time. Uh, yeah, Maharaj. Okay. But there was some issue in, uh, in, uh, in Krishnikesho Prabhuji's internet connection. Yes. Is, he cannot come? Can I join? No, Maharaj, he is not able to log in right now. He is having some internet issues at his side. Oh, unfortunate. Okay. Is his, okay. his turn now? I can in now. You I... can continue, Maharaj. All right, I'll continue. Thank you very much. If, some, if, if there are more people to be admitted, kindly let me know because I may not notice. Definitely, Maharaj. Right? Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead. We were talking yesterday in the last class. We spoke about some points from text number five. And if you look in the objectives, it was mentioned there some of the things which we had to cover. The three categories of devotees. We spoke about them quite thoroughly. I think you're quite clear. Right? The, the three categories of devotees was based on, according to what? Qualification? Faith and, faith and, faith and knowledge of the scriptures. And knowledge of the scriptures, right. And then we also heard that there's division of devotees according to chanting of the holy name. Somebody's be, just began chanting maybe chanted only once or something, but is considered a devotee. And somebody's chanting regularly, constant. He's also, he's a Majjama devotee, he's constantly chanting every day. And someone else, the Uttama Adhikari, how is he described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita? Anybody know? Anybody sees him, no? He will, they will chant Hare Krishna immediately. Right. Simply by seeing him, he makes other people chant Hare Krishna. Right. Okay. So today we're going to speak about the process of Diksha. We didn't speak about that yet. Right? So that's, that's in, the, uh, in the next uh, PowerPoint. I'm going to share the screen. Right? Can you see my screen now? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Good. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, we're on this lesson five. So a little revision, ways to associate appro appropriately with the three categories of devotees, right? How do we associate with somebody who chants the whole, who, who's a kanista, who just began chanting the holy name? For kanista adhikari, we offer mentally obeisances. Right. Respect him in the mind, right. And how about the madhyama adhikari? Worshipping the deity. Yeah. 
someone's worshipping the deity, then we bow down to them, we give them obeisances. And someone, because they're, uh, they're worshipping the deity, they must, they must be spiritually initiated. And they're worshipping the deity, so we offer humble obeisances to them. And someone else, the Uttama, we associate, how do we associate with the advanced devotee? The Uttama? Yeah, Dandabas, and then what? By hearing from them. Yeah, you want to hear from them, and also what do you want to do? Give service to them. Right, give service, and you want to also inquire from them, put questions before them, to understand more the nature of the Absolute Truth. Okay? That means, Maharaj, we should uh, be in that Guhyamakyati Prichati uh, consciousness with the exalted devotee. Yes. Loving it. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Let's go Yamakyati Prichati. The importance within is gone of maintaining an appropriate attitude towards devotees' external features, right? We had, we had nice examples, devotees in our scriptures who were diseased or low-born, low caste, like that, but they're great devotees. So similarly, within ISKCON, very important because we're an international society and we have people from all walks of life and all cultures coming to Krishna consciousness. And then appropriate ways of seeing and relating to an empowered Vaishnava. We just had that, right? We spoke about it. And then, oh, the personal advancement, self-assessment, we haven't been able to do that yet. I'm still trying to find the key <laughs> for this self-assessment. I have the questions, but I don't have the key to know uh, how to place us. So we'll try to come up with that. I haven't been able to find the material yet. Anyway, we'll go ahead. Here's a quote here from Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. A Kanista Adhikari gradually comes to perceive the mental activities of a devotee and tries seriously to advance to a higher stage. His materialistic conceptions will go away of their own accord. We hope, yeah, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, he, he should be engaged in service. Hopefully he's worshipping the deity and because he's doing service for the deity, so he, he's getting some purification. And he starts to think more about it. He sees the devotees come and he sees how they honor the deity, how they bow before the deity and how they perform kirtan. And maybe he will also hear the classes and so on. And so he begins to advance a bit to a higher stage. And so gradually he becomes madhyam. In the beginning we're all kanista. We all come to the movement kanista, neophyte. Gradually we progress. So what does it mean to advance? How do we advance? Anybody more like... More and more hearing and chanting, more and more hearing and associating with... Uh, uh, the, then what should happen? Please, hearing about the glories of the Lord. What's supposed to happen? Yes, what's going to happen? What's the effect yes. of the hearing? Somebody may hear, they may just become bored. <laughs> it's like attachment to the heart becomes holy name. Yes? Shushu Sattadana sir, when you hear, the heart becomes clean of all dirty things. It's also, yeah, beautiful. Somebody quoted that verse, Shushu Shrosha Dadana Shiva Vasudev Kitaruchi. By that first, that's because we don't have a taste to hear. We serve the devotees. So we do service in the beginning, and by serving them, we get a taste for hearing. And by hearing, then we clean the heart. We lose, we should lose our attraction for material sense gratification. And we should become more attached to chanting and hearing, taking part in devotional activities. Right, here's the verse. 
talking about rati and prema. Rati meaning attachment and prema. So a devotee is considered superlative or superior according to his attachment and love. Right? This is something I was speaking yesterday about it a bit. I said, you don't get this kind of attachment and love just by mechanical or ritualistic activities. We have to really, really want, we have to have really a strong desire to get love of Krishna. That we have to become really intensely desiring to get this mood of love for Krishna. So from Prabhupada's purpur, the process by which a devotee becomes attached to Krishna is described in Antya Lila, chapter 4, 192. Diksha Kale Bhakta Kare Atma Samarpana Se Kali Krishna Tari Kari Atma Sama. At the time of initiation, when a devotee fully surrenders to the Lord's service, Krishna accepts him to be as good as himself. So the time of initiation doesn't mean just simply the time you sat in the fire yagya. The fire yagya, that's just a ritual which takes place to satisfy our mind. But the actual time of initiation is referring to the, the process by which we receive transcendental knowledge and by which we fully give up, our, give, we fully surrender ourselves to the Guru and take up more fully the Lord's service. So the time of initia initiation is an ongoing process. Initiation means the beginning and it continues. So this is Jiva Goswami's Bhakti Sandarbha describing the effects of Diksha. By Diksha, one gradually becomes disinterested in material enjoyment and gradually becomes interested in spiritual life. Note the word gradually, right? It, it's not immediate. It's going to take time. It's a process and it will take some time. We hear gradually, gradually we lose our attraction for material sense gratification and gradually we become more interested in spiritual life. Prabhupada quotes this verse in the Nectar of Instruction in the purport of text number 5. Actually there's many very powerful verses there in the Nectar of Instruction. Some devotees, they keep that book with them and they memorize many of the verses from the purports and, the, and as well as the text. But Prabhupada's uh, references in the purports are very good, very powerful, very useful in preaching. So those of you who like to memorize verses, it's very good to make a study of this Nectar of Instruction and memorize all the verses in the book. And you can use them in preaching, they're very helpful. So this is defining purpose of Diksha, right? Awakening transcendental knowledge. And we also become freed from sinful reactions. That's the effect of Diksha, to become uh, freed from our past sins and to awaken transcendental knowledge. Srila Prabhupada explains, Diksha is a continuous process whereby a devotee becomes increasingly disinterested in material life, more and more interested in spiritual life. Before bhava, surrender is disturbed by anartas and aparas. Attainment of bhava is a big step in Diksha or advancement, right? Can someone tell me the different stages? Who knows the, 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 the different stages of spiritual progress in devotional service which lead up to bhava 
and then Prima. Anantari Lash Prabhu. First is uh, uh, Sadhu Sangha. No. Mm. Mm. First begins uh, then with. Then is uh, Bhajana Kriya. Mm -hmm. Then is Anantha Nivritri. Ad uh, then is. Yeah. Uh, then is uh, Neshtha. Uh, uh, Nishtha, then is uh, uh, Prema, and then is Bhav. No, no. A little wrong. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it, it, sorry. it begins with Shrad, Shraddha. Yes, Shraddha. Adau Shraddha, right? Yes. The yes. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha Association. And with the association of devotees, then you learn Bhajana Kriya to do the devotional activities, right? And by doing the devotional activities then comes anartha nivritti, destroy, remove the anarthas. And then when you get rid of the anarthas, then you come to nishta, ruchi, asakti, bhava and then prema. Bhava comes before prema. You said prema bhava. <laughs> Right? Sorry, yes, so, so thank you. Bhava is the ray, the first ray of prema. And prema is like the sun. And bhava is like one ray of the sun. So at what stage do we get diksha? Where does diksha come in this process? Bhajana Kriya. Yes, Bhajana Kriya. Right. Bhajana Kriya is right. Bhajana Kriya, in the association of devotees, first you get asso faith, association with devotees, then Bhajana Kriya. And at the time of, we're doing Bhajana Kriya, you know, we have to do Bhajana, the de devotional activities. We should do them for about one year, faithfully, practicing four regulated principles, chanting 16 rounds, waking up early and so on. Then we become qualified for Diksha. Right? And with Diksha, then we can go on to the next day, Anartha Nivriti, removing the Anarthas. We have to get rid of these unwanted things from the heart. So it's a big, big step up to Bhava. It takes some time. Bhava is way up there. Bhava is so far up there. So diksha is complete when one comes to bhava. At this point, bhava means devotional service in ecstasy. So we experience some ecstasy. And you can read in the Nectar of Devotion, when you come to study Nectar of Devotion, you'll see there's a chapter on devotional service in ecstasy. And the nine different symptoms of bhava are all listed how a devotee doesn't waste a moment of time and he's very attached to the holy dham and he's always hearing and chanting about krishna these different kinds of these are different symptoms of bhava so at this point at the point of bhava krishna accepts the devotee on the same level as himself and the devotee becomes eligible to serve krishna with his transcendental senses, right? So this is when, this is the perfection of our diksha. It's a, quite a big step, a big step up. And now talking a bit more about, so we can understand the importance of diksha. From the Nectar of Devotion, which is Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, so it's described there, there are actually 64 different angas by which we, different ways in which we can perform devotional service. So the first 20, it's mentioned the first 20 angas, the first 20 limbs serve as a door for entering bhakti. So it's not that we're already doing bhakti, but we're just coming in the door. And the first three are taking shelter of a guru, receiving teachings after initiation, 
and serving the Guru with respect. These are said to be the principal ones. First 20 Angas, the first 10 are all things which we should do. Just like here, three things which we should do. And then there's 10 things which we shouldn't do. No, we shouldn't do. We shouldn't come before the deities when we're contaminated. We shouldn't come before the deities uh, and argue in front of the deities. And different things like that. So just like we were speaking earlier about yama and niyama. Prohibitions and rules and regulations. So this is three rules and regulations. Take shelter of a guru. You have to get, you have to have a guru. You need, to, you, it's very important. It's not enough just to follow the principles and chant. You need to have a connection with a spiritual teacher. And not only get initiation, but get teachings from him. You have to hear, you have to understand. So hearing from very important, and ideally we should also give service. And so, of course, it's similar to Bhagavad Gita 434. Try to learn the truth, approach a spiritual master, inquire from him, and render service unto him. So similar points, these are the principal items in relating to the Guru. One must accept the pure devotee, representative of God, as one's guru, and then offer him all the respects one would offer the Supreme Personality. This is the secret of success. For one who adopts this method, perfect process is revealed. Let's have some, some of you read. I'm getting tired speaking. You, you should read to me. Can we have somebody to read? Mor Moria Krishna. Mayuri Krishna, sorry. By offering service and surrendering to the spiritual master, one is elevated to the devotional service. And by performing devotional service, one gradually becomes attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because of this attachment to the Lord, one can understand the Lord. Right, Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th Canto, 7th Chapter, 29, Purport. So, it's all in relation to how to relate to the spiritual master, offering service, surrender. By that process, we're elevated. And by devotional service, we become attached to Krishna. We want to become attached by attachment, then we can understand Krishna better. Okay? So, who to accept as a guru? Accepting an Uttama Adhikari as guru. The, an important quote here, which is made in text 5, Nectar of Instruction. Someone read? Where do you go in the Prabhu? Perfectly advancing, developing attachment and love, process of Diksha, accepting an Uttamadikari as Guru. One should not become a spiritual master unless he has attained the platform of Uttama Adhikari. A neophyte Vaishnava or a Vaishnava situated on the intermediate platform can also accept disciples, but such disciples must be on the same platform and it should be understood that they cannot advance very well toward the ultimate goal of life under his insufficient guidance. Therefore, a disciple should be careful to accept an Uttama Adhikari as a spiritual master. Nectar of Instruction, text 5 per per, on page number 58. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Oh, please continue. Read that last sentence. Yeah. How do we apply this within ISKCON? Would you like to answer? Uh, yes, Maras. Maras, uh, before uh, answering, I have a small uh, uh, doubt which uh, please uh, enlighten me. Like uh, uh, you said, attachment to the spiritual master. Uh, sometimes it may not be possible for physical association with him to hear his lectures in person, 
so we hear the audio tapes given by our spiritual master uh, then that that kind of uh, attachment is also uh, okay prabhu uh, maharaj well in the absence of physical presence yes it's okay okay but uh, more and more like uh, uh, physical association like uh, when he is uh, giving lectures in the temple or somewhere in a very big uh, festivals and all uh, but for me uh, it, 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 it has more intense attachment maharaj whether it is uh, a right approach or wrong approach i always uh, contemplate on that well certainly we should always be eager to have the opportunity of physical association because physical association can be so powerful and we shouldn't simply think well oh it's okay i hear his lectures all the time i don't need to go and associate <laughs> you know there is a difference between sitting at home and hearing a lecture and actually being in his presence directly uh then maras coming to this uh, how do we apply this within is con this my practical approach for this concept is like uh, uh, spiritual master normally he he will be always an uttam adhikari and uh, he uses the uh, knowledge which is coming through the disciplic succession Uh, without any adulteration without any concoctions so uh, that way i feel is yes, my spiritual master is an uttam adhikari and i can learn so many things from him which were not known to me earlier and which will be very very useful for my spiritual growth okay would someone else like to respond to this Um, you've got a number of hands up. Do you want to respond to this, or have you got other questions, um, Karuna Sindhu Prabhu? You're muted, Prabhu. I have a question. Shall I ask Maharaj? Yes. Um, he, uh, Maharaj is asking if you want to respond to this question first. Would you yes. like to respond to this? Okay. Gadab, who you want to respond? Okay, yes, go ahead. Prabhu. so uh, here since prabhupad suggests us to take shelter to the uh, uttama tikari as our spiritual master so in our iskon prabhupad also wrote in the uh, book spiritual master and disciple so those to uh, uh, who want to take shelter to a person as a guru or sanyas one should observe a spiritual master and also a, a, a disciple uh, try to observe the spiritual master and also spiritual master uh, have to know uh, his candidate who, who want to take shelter to him at least uh, one or two 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 years of practicing in a four regulative principle and chanting the holy name then after that he can uh, reveal his Uh, heart is mine to take shelter to some someone as uh, sanyas or guru in this con hari krishna yeah, thank you prabhu i think that was very nice that we 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 have to understand the purpose of initiation in iskon you know iskon is a big society and we do have many spiritual masters now problems do come in the sense that we have many spiritual masters and each of the spiritual masters have their groups of disciples and it can create a lot of division in our society so it's very important to keep the unity of our society and one of the very powerful ways of keeping the unity within our society is by having everyone connect to shila prabhupad for now if i ask you a new devotee coming to iskon 
Can we direct him to a spiritual master? Do you? No, but no. Well, you know, you can. We can direct him to Srila Prabhupada. People are coming to ISKCON, they're new, they're looking for a spiritual master. Our process is for, we should direct them immediately to Srila Prabhupada and connect them to Srila Prabhupada. Let them read Prabhupada's books and hear about Prabhupada. And you can even teach them to recite Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra. And they can worship Prabhupada, take part in Prabhupada's Guru Puja, which all the devotees do. Isn't that true? New devotees, they can all they can they can all take shelter of Srila Prabhupada. Except that. Before before initiation, there first must come instruction. It's not that you get initiation first and then instruction. You ha you get instruction after initiation, certainly, but before the initiation you also have to get instruction. And the initial instructions all come from Srila Prabhupada. We join Srila Prabhupada's movement, we take part in his programs. Right? Is it clear to everyone? Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, you've got a couple of other questions. Will you take them? All right. Um, so let's go to, um, we've got Shruti Mishra Mataji and Karuna Sindhu Prabhu. Let's go to Shruti Mishra Mataji first. You've got your hand raised for a while. Prabhuji, I rose hand for reading, not for question. Oh, okay. All right. Well, would you want to lower it for the time being? Um, and then when we, when we get to that reading bit, you can raise your hand again. Then Karuna Sindhu Prabhu. Maharaj, you have mentioned that neophyte devotee and devotee in intermediate level can also make disciples. So, could you please explain on that? Yes. That anyone who is uh, in the Krishna Consciousness Movement, no, not what to speak, why only Krishna Consciousness Movement? It's up to the devotee, it's up to the person who's looking for initiation to decide where he wants to take the initiation. Nobody is forced. You can't force someone. You have to take initiation from him. Everyone, everyone has their own opinion about who is their spiritual master. Just like we just heard some, who was it, Murli Govinda say? His guru is Uttama Adhikari. Was it? Was that Murli Govinda said that? Yes, yes. Right. You, so, so in your eyes he's Uttama Adhikari, but it doesn't mean in everybody else's eyes he's Uttama Adhikari. Everyone has their own vision. Everyone has their own opinion. And we have to understand it's a very personal thing, who we take for a spiritual master. And everyone has the right to decide for themselves who is their guru and when to take initiation. It's not uh, something which you know that, oh, no, we passed the motion, this, this guru is Uttama Adhikari. No, we, we can't do that. That's, you, can't, you can't legalize, you can't put it, you know, on, on the court up. You know, we don't know who is Uttama Adhikari and who is the Knista Adhikari. Krishna knows. It's, it, it's, it, but it's a very personal thing for everyone. So somebody may be Uttama Adhikari and somebody may be Kanista and may be Madhyam. Everyone has their own choice about who is their spiritual master. Right? Okay, now, we want every, you have to also understand that there's Diksha Guru, there is also Shiksha Guru. 
Is there any difference in the qualification between Shiksha and Diksha Guru? Right. Both have to be, e they're both equally qualified. The qualification for the Guru, whether he's giving Shiksha or Diksha, is the same. Right. So, I, I'm, I'm just going to change my computer. Just give me one minute to stop that sound, right? Okay. So, I'm, I'm still with you. You can hear me okay? Yes, Marat, we can hear you. Okay, good. Have you moved on to the machine with BVVN? Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that co-host now. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Mm. So, this is a very important point, because this point often comes up under discussion and among devotees. And in order to keep our society united, there has to be this common vision about who is actually the head and the leader of our society, leader of our institution. Now, everyone has their own individual faith about their particular guru, but at the same time, what is the purpose of initiation within ISKCON? The purpose of initiation in ISKCON is to help to connect us to Prabhupada and not only Prabhupada, but the disciplic succession, right? Prabhupada, of course, is the founder of Acharya. When, when it comes to giving class, whose books do we use? Prabhupada's. This whole Bhakti Shastri course, it's all quotes from Prabhupada. What did Prabhupada say? What did Prabhupada do? And from Prabhupada's book, Nectar of Instruction, and, and, and Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, it's all from Prabhupada. We're following Prabhupada's guidelines. So it's very important for us to be clear about this. So we want to accept an Uttama Adhikari. The problem is, you see, you have to understand within ISKCON there was some history. I don't know if you're all familiar with the history of ISKCON or what, but in the past we did have some spiritual masters. Remember, when Prabhupada left the planet, 1977, many of us, I, I, was, I was 27 or 28, I was 28 years old, and many of the gurus, some gurus were younger than me, and they were made spiritual masters. So, you know, they were very young and they took on that position. It was very difficult. And so they got problems, just like we heard. It's not easy to deal with money and women. So young men trying to become spiritual masters and take worship and so much honor and so on, they got difficulties and some of them fell down. They gave up Krishna consciousness. So people had problems. Of course, we're much better situated now. Most of the gurus are all old men. But in Prabhupada's time, you know, Prabhupada had to begin the movement. And he gave sannyas to many young men. So it was difficult for them to keep the vows of sannyas. And, once they, and some of them went on to become spiritual teachers and they had difficulty. But they did do a lot of service for ISKCON and they helped to build up the movement. So because of these problems, th this is one, another reason why we encourage people that we don't just only have a Diksha Guru, but we also have to have a good Shiksha Guru. And the Shiksha Guru is Srila Prabhupada, and he is the Shiksha Guru for everyone in the movement. Is it clear? Yes, Maharaj, you have a question from Anantavilasa Prabhu. 
And oh. then from Mayuri Krishna. All right, we'll take two questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I have this question. In, in, this, in, this, uh, in this, you have said that therefore a disciple should be careful to accept an Uttam Adhikari as a spiritual master. We, we were discussing about that. But yesterday we spoke about Madhyam Adhikari, that even an Uttam Adhikari should come to the Madhyam platform to preach. So uh, I'm a bit confused, Maharaj. Like even an Uttam Adhikari and our movement is mainly a preaching movement, we know, right, Maharaj? So is it like... Um, although our so like although all the spiritual masters are uttam uttam adhikari, but they have to be madhyam adhikari to preach. I'm I'm a bit confused in that aspect, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you. <laughs> it certainly is quite quite a bit confusing, isn't it? <laughs> yes, man. So. <laughs> Anyway, the main point is, we do need a spiritual master, and we need to take initiation from a living person, right? He has to be a living person to give us initiation. At the same time, our Uttama Adhikari, who, is behind, who we're all mainly, who is giving us the instructions, you know, that's Srila Prabhupada. He's the Uttama Adhikari, without question, right? We don't question. Right, other people, right. you know, other people, other gurus, you know, we could question, you know. <laughs> but Srila Prabhupada, no question. Everybody, okay, he's Uttama Adhikari. So we accept Srila Prabhupada and we take Diksha Guru. We have Diksha Guru, we have Shiksha Gurus living also. And they help us to come to know Prabhupada better and to be connected to Prabhupada. All right? Yes, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. So, Mary, there was one more question. I'll just take one yes, more. Um, Mayuri Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Um, my question was, um, if the um, sannyasi that we have taken initiation from, if he was to fall down or um, for some reason he could not stay as a sannyas, then how do we still stay connected to Srila Prabhupada and the Guru Parampara? Yes, this is, you see, this is why we have this point, this is why this is brought up, and this is why we have the disciple course, and why we bring up this point, it's so important for us. Because in the past, there were cases that people took initiation, and their guru had problems, and their guru went outside of ISKCON, and many people also left ISKCON. They followed their guru, they say, I'm going with my guru. But it shouldn't be like that. We lost many devotees because they thought, I'm following my guru. And their guru went into maya, total maya, and their disciples followed him. So this is why it's very important that we need to be connected very closely to Srila Prabhupada. Now, if the spiritual master does have difficulties and he gives up sannyas, now we have seen some people give up sannyas, but they stay in the movement. And Prabhupada wanted that. Prabhupada didn't want that people who have difficulties have to leave his gone. He didn't want that they have to commit suicide, like in Chaitanya Charitamrita. You know, Chota Haridas committed suicide because he broke his sannyas vow a little bit. So he did, Prabhupada just wanted we come back and stay in Krishna consciousness. So it's up to the devotee to decide for himself what you want to do. If you still have faith in him as your guru, then you can remain with him. But if you want, you can take a new guru or you can simply take shelter of Srila Prabhupada. The Srila Prabhupada is the ultimate Uttama Adhikari and he is the Shiksha Guru for the whole society. And we all have a relationship with him. And he can take us back home, back to Godhead. Is it clear? Yes, Maharaj, it's clear. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for the question. Okay, well... Krishna. Oh, am I the host or are you the host? I, I'm a, you are the co-host, I'm the host. Can, 
I'm having difficulty to change the slide. Can you change the slide? No. <laughs> it's okay. You can. You should. You should still be able to change them. I don't know. I'm not able. Have you Have you brought them up on your on your other computer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just see what happens. Yeah, I'm trying. It's not moving. <laughs> oh, have you? Why don't you? Have you stopped sharing them on your previous computer? Yeah. Is that, is that computer still connected? No, I closed the other computer because it was making so much noise. Oh. Okay, try sharing the screen again because I can see your screen. Okay, share the screen. Let's see. This will stop other screen sharing. Do you That's want... That's okay. That's okay. You can stop other screen sharing because it looks like you're connected on two devices from what I can see. There you go. You're back. Yeah. Okay. So where's the slide now? Are we on this slide? Is this lesson? This one, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Someone like to read? Sachinandan, Sachinandan, Vishnu Bapa. Who would you like to read this slide? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll do that. <coughs> Effectively advancing. Mm. Sorry, I'm not able to see the heading, uh, the first line. Uh, uh, should I continue with the second? Uh, fine, just now. Effectively, effectively advancing, developing advancement and love. Process of Diksha, accepting an Uttam Adhikari as Guru. In the last lesson, we discussed the eligibility or qualifications for pure devotion, Adhikar and then the level of advancement amongst devotees. Both classifications are divided into three, and those three divisions are namely Kanishta, Madhyama, and Uttama. Although technically these two classifications speak about different things, Shri Prabhupada, with the exception of following uh, with the exception of following Purport, equates the two in his teachings. Right. Go ahead, Prabhu. Shivra Swami in... Go ahead. Keep reading. Rati Prema... A devotee is considered superlative or superior according to his attachment and love. Purport. Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur has stated that if one has devotional faith in Krishna consciousness, he is to be considered an eligible candidate for further advancement in Krishna consciousness. Those who have faith are divided into three categories, namely Uttama, Madhyama and Kanishta. The standard of devotion is always categorized in the same way. A neophyte believes that Only love of Krishna or Krishna consciousness is very good. But he may not know the basis of pure Krishna consciousness or how one can become a perfect devotee. Sometimes in the heart of a neophyte, there is attachment for karma, gyan and yoga. When he is free and transcendental to mixed devotional activity, he becomes a second class devotee. The devotee are described as the devotees are described as positive, comparative and superlative in terms of their love and attachment for Krishna. Right. 
22.71. So Srila Prabhupada is comparing the positions of the devotees in terms of their love and attachment for Krishna. So this is something very special, different from just simply their knowledge or their, their faith. So love of Krishna, something, this is something which we want to develop, this goal of life to develop love of God. All right? Someone else can read? Anant Vilas Prabhu. Uh, mind, yeah, yes, good. Um, Bhakti Vinoda Thakur, however, in Bhakti Tata Viveka specifies Uttama Adhikari as the requirement for Madhyama Bhaktas to attain the state of taste and attachment as summarized in the following table. Okay, now notice the difference in terminology here. We're, now we're talking about Madhyama Bhaktas. There's Uttama Adhikaris and there's Madhyama Madhyam Adhikaris, but here you've got Madhyam Bhaktas. <laughs> so Bhakta, we're talking about this real love and devotion and attachment to Krishna. The Uttama Adhikari, Adhikari is a qualification for, in terms of knowledge, and faith, a little different here. So Madhyama Bhakta, uh, the, the, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that the Uttama Adhikari is the requirement just to, to, to be a Madhyama Bhakta, to attain the stage of taste and attachment. So let's have a look at the table here. Oh, so, so qualification and advancement, right? You've got devotional stages. We went through those devotional stages. There's the English terms. Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, right? Unsteady devotion, Bhajana Kriya. Purifying bad habits, Anartha Nivriti. Steady devotion, Nishta. Taste, ruchi, attachment, asakti, ecstasy, bhava, and love, prema. So these are the different devotional stages. And the qualification, the qualification for that. So qualification for faith and association, unsteady devotion, and purifying bad habit, kanista. This is for the kanistas, right? Up to up to the stage of anartha nivriti. But to come to madhyam, you have, that's nishta. Qualification to come up to, to nishta, to be steady in devotion, you must be at least a madhyam. And if you want to go beyond nishta to ruchi, you have to, have, you have to become uttama. Okay? And then for advancement, it's similar, but a little different that for the advancement to bhava and prema, you have to be uttama adhikari. Okay, so this little table, uh, don't worry about it too much. If you don't understand, we we'll just try to introduce these things to you. Someone can read this. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. To achieve loving devotion, one certainly must have the highest qualification by faith and knowledge, Uttama Dikari. But one who has attained this highest qualification has not necessarily attained the highest stage of love and attachment for Krishna, Mahabhagavad. Thus, an Uttama Dikari may still be a conditioned soul at the stage of, of taste or attachment. All right. Is it, does it shock us? Someone may be Uttama Adhikari, but he still may be a conditioned soul at the stage of taste or attachment. Yeah. 
he hasn't developed the love for Krishna. He, he, may, he may have good faith and knowledge, but he's still lacking in his love for Krishna. Go ahead. Vaishnav. In idle words, an Uttam Adhikari is not automatically an Uttam Bhakta. He may simply be an advanced Madhyam Bhakta. A person must have excellent business, business sense to become a millionaire. But just because a person has excellent business sense doesn't necessarily make him a millionaire. <laughs> uh, the, okay, this. An Uttam Adhikari may be either a conditioned soul at the stage of taste or attachment, or a fully liberated soul at the stage of ecstasy and love. In either case, Uttamadhikaris are ideally suited to be spiritual masters because they have the highest qualifications in terms of faith and knowledge, and thus they cannot be deviated by the arguments of non devotees, nor bearing exceptional circumstances that they fall down. All right, that's very important here, these points. That we may say, oh, they, did not, they don't really have love of Krishna, they haven't developed pure love of Krishna, but their Uttama Adhikaris, they have the highest qualification in terms of faith and knowledge. So they're not going to be easily taken away from Krishna consciousness, right? Because they've got that good faith and knowledge. And unless something very un unusual happens, they won't fall down, they won't get difficulties. Yeah, just finish it, Prabhu. Vaishnava? Uttamadhikari Vaishnavas can be recognized by their ability to convert many fallen souls to Krishna consciousness, the primary duty of a spiritual master. Shivaraswami Srila Bhakti Chintamani. Right. Srila Bhakti Chintamani, pages 207 to 212. Thank you. All right, so this Shivaram Swami is a Srila Prabhupada disciple, very senior devotee in the Krishna consciousness movement, and he's expressing his realization here, his understanding of the Krishna conscious philosophy and how it relates to our Krishna consciousness movement and devotees in our Krishna consciousness movement. Maharaj, sorry, your voice is um, cutting out a little bit from time to time. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm over here in Mayapur and the line is not always <laughs> the best. All right, so we want everyone to understand these points a little bit. The main point is that just because someone may be Uttama Adhikari doesn't mean that he's actually knowing his rasa with Krishna. That's the point. And that is not a qualification to become a spiritual master. So when someone is described as an Uttama Adhikari, generally we're talking about their faith and their knowledge of the scriptures. We're not talking about their love, in deep, intense love for Krishna. But that will be developing, of course. Is it understood? Everyone agree? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, Maharaj, I'm still not able to understand. Uh, uh, it, it, it needs maybe more clarity from you regarding how uh, Uttam Adhikari, he may be perfect in the knowledge and uh, faith, but still uh, it's not on the level of uh, having the uh, pure love of Godhead. Uh, if you can just explain it a bit again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, pure love of Godhead, that love comes about that one becomes com totally absorbed in Krishna, you know, that he's, he, he's, he's in, in one of these rasas with Krishna. He, he's, he understands his rasa with Krishna and he's thinking about Krishna. It's, it's actually requires that we have to understand more about the process of devotional service and how there's higher levels of devotion, you see. There's devotional service according to the rules and regulations. But higher than the rules and regulations is 
raga bhakti or spontaneous attraction spontaneous attraction for service to krishna so that Um, am I? Hare Krishna. What happened? You've got two mics on. You need to switch one of your. You need to switch one of your mics off. I've got two. Yeah, you've got you've got two computers on, and both the microphones are on so you need to mute one of the computer's microphones otherwise we'll get an echo okay now it should be okay Hare Krishna <laughs> Hare Krishna can you hear me Hare Krishna yes, yes we can hear you can hear you okay I switch one off yes that's better Okay, so speaking about love of Krishna, that you, we have to understand love of Krishna is not simply something academic, but it's a very uh, in, inter, in, esoteric kind of experience, an awakening of love and attachment and longing for Krishna. It's not just simply knowing about Krishna and chanting about Krishna, but they actually develop that intense feeling of love for Krishna. So this comes uh, as we come after practicing the rules and regulations, then one would go more into what is called Raga Bhakti or spontaneous devotion. So on, in the level of spontaneous devotion, one becomes very, very greedy and he has a very strong desire to get Krishna. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Maharaj, we can hear you okay. Yes, yeah, so, so love of Krishna, the qualification to get that love of Krishna is greed. You have to, you have to really want it very badly. And you want it so much even that you would even cry to get it. You have to be, you, the, the, there's a verse like that, and, and Prabhupada coined the name of the Krishna Consciousness Movement from that verse. Uh, Krishna Bhakti Rasabhavati Kriyadam Yadoti Labhyate Tatra Loyam Api Muyam Ekalam Janma Koti Sukriterna Labhyate That there's only one qualification to get love of Krishna, and that is intense greed to achieve it. And that's the only price. You know, just like you go to the market and you want cheaper, you can you give me a discount, you know. But here, there's no discount. You have to pay the price. And the price is intense greed to get it. And unless you have that very strong, intense greed to get love of Krishna, you won't get it. So one may just be practicing Krishna consciousness and he's, you know, he likes the philosophy and he studies it and everything, he does all the sudden, but he may not have awakened that really strong greed to get love of Krishna. It's like that. So Maharaj, uh, uh, what I understood uh, at, at Uttam Adhikari, uh, he he will uh, he will have a uh, very strong faith and knowledge, but he may not have the intense love for Krishna. So um, yes, uh, is, is that he may not have the intense love, but there will be love because I mean his faith is very. Strong. Oh yes, he has. He, 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 yeah, his love, is, but his love is you know it may it's not on that level of bhava and prema. He has maybe not come to that level of you know the full manifestation of love, which we call prema. You see? But okay. it doesn't okay. have to be. He's still, he's an Uttama Adhikari, even if he's not an Uttama Bhakta, 
He's an Uttama Adhikari in terms of faith and knowledge. And can it also be a vice versa thing when one is having a bhav and prem and he's maybe on the level of a, um, a Kalishta or a Madhyam Adhikari as we discussed? Well, I, I thought it's, it's possible, I thought it could be possible that somebody could have that very strong love. Just like people are born in a family of devotees, you know, and the, like Bridge Bassi people, Bridge Bassi people, they're, they're very intensely attached to Krishna. They have great love for Krishna. You meet sometimes these people in Vrindavan, the village people in the, in the village there in Braja. They're very simple, not much educated, and they have so much love for Krishna. They may not know very much about the philosophy, but they, they, they have a very deep love. All right. Is, is it possible that they have deep love and they are not uh, very strong in faith? They may not have the knowledge, I understood, but regarding the faith, if it talk, if one is having strong faith, then only they can have love. Is it not correct? I'm not. I'm not very sure about this. This question about the, the faith and the, and how it relates to love. It's an interesting point. I'd have to think more about that. Generally, when we talk, when we spoke about faith in the beginning, describing the Kanista Majam Uttama, that faith, they, they have faith that, you know, Krishna consciousness is the, the right process. You know, it's a good process. They, they, they want to practice, they want to take part in it. But this love is a very, it is directed towards the person Krishna that a you know, person actually becomes deeply attached to Krishna. Just like you have a family member or you have a friend, you know, you have love, you have feelings for them. It's not, a, it's not just some faith. Faith, you know, that you, you may not know the person very well. We're talking about faith in the process, but love is it's a very personal thing. So the devotee is actually developing a relationship with Krishna, maybe through the deity or through the holy name or through the scriptures, but he's having a relationship with Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. <clears throat> Maharaj, you've got um, Somya Mataji and Dila Madhuri. Lalita Mataji would also like to ask you something as well. Uh, okay. Can we go to Somya Mataji first, please? Hare Krishna Maharaj, So now we've been discussing that how a person who has a strong faith and strong knowledge, but who doesn't have devotion uh, as an Uttama Adhikari. So my doubt is that if one has love and devotion, then is it also an Uttama Adhikari? You see, it's not that he doesn't have love and devotion. He has love and devotion, but he doesn't have that love and devotion on the highest level. It's not on the level of bhava and prema. You know, to be chanting and to be following everything, they have to have some love and devotion, but it's not very much developed. It's very, you know, it's, it, it's immature. It hasn't fully developed. Everyone, everyone has some love. Everyone has some love, you know, but often we give our love to other things. Okay, Lila Maturi, um, Lalita Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, in the previous slide, uh, it was saying that based on how many fallen souls they we are uh, Uttamadhikari is converting, we can recognize Uttamadhikari. But um, Gaur Kishore Baba Maharaj, uh, Vish, uh, like this Jagannath Baba Maharaj. So those people were not preaching. Yes. So how are we going to take them? 
Well, we take them on the basis, you, you say like Gorky Shodas Babaji was not preaching, but he had disciple, right? Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was his disciple. And look how many disciples he made. So his disciple was preaching on behalf of his guru. Okay. Just like Rupa and Sanatan, they were not preaching. They were staying in Vrindavan. But by their books, they're preaching. By their writing, they're preaching. By their temple, they're preaching. Yes? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Lokanath Goswami, he had only one disciple, Naratam, and Naratam Das Thakur made so many disciples. So, we accept them on the basis of their connection, their, you know, their, by their inspiration, the Krishna consciousness movement is going on. Yes. Just like today, today is the uh, disappearance day of Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj. Yes. So, so Gorky Shodas, you could say he didn't preach, but his his disciple preached. His his disciple is the guru of our Srila Prabhupada. So we're we're so much indebted to him. So we honour them as our spiritual masters. And that's why they're that's why he's there in the line of disciplic succession. He that parampara is based on shiksha, it's not based on diksha. Right? Bhaktivinoda Thakur was not the sh the diksha guru of Gorkishor Das Babaji, but he gave shiksha. Gorkishor Das Babaji would come and hear from Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And similarly, Jagannath Das Babaji gave shiksha to Bhaktivinoda Thakur. When Bhaktivinoda Thakur discovered the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya, he brought Jagannath Das Babaji there to confirm it. And Jagannath Das Babaji confirmed, this is the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. So the disciplic succession is built on shiksha, not on diksha. It's instruction which is very important. We have to get good shiksha. Right? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Someone Maharaj, please. There's a, there's a couple of more hands up. Will you go to them? Can we come back to them? I sure. Just... Okay. Thank you. Please read this. Raktim Prabhu, would you like to read this? Well, maybe he wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, somebody else then. Anyone else? <laughs> A devotee must understand that the Adi Guru, original spiritual master of Sampradaya, is Diksha. Is Diksha Guru. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Shiksha. Shiksha should be, okay. right? Okay. Uh, is the Shiksha Guru, and only his teachings are to be accepted and not those of any other scholar or teacher. And only a saintly devotee who has understood the teaching of Shiksha, Shiksha Guru is eligible to be to be a Diksha Guru or others. Mm. Harinam Chintamani. Mm. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he wrote Harinam Chintamani, mm. he's describing there. The, the Adi Guru, who is our Adi Guru? Srila Prabhupada. Right, Srila Prabhupada, he's the Adi Guru of our, sampr our society. So he's the spiritual master of the Sampradaya. And so, the, the Diksha Guru has to be servant, he has to serve the teachings of the Shiksha Guru. We have to understand Srila Prabhupada's teachings, that's the qualification in ISKCON to be a Guru. You want to be a Guru in ISKCON, you must know Srila Prabhupada's teachings. You must have done Bhakti Shastri and you should do Bhakti Vaibhava and maybe even Bhakti Vedanta. Then you can become a guru. 
take disciples because you've studied the philosophy, you know the philosophy. Here are some points. Someone would like to read this for us? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, that, uh, that the following statement be accepted as Iskon's statement about the founder Acharya. To fulfill the previous Acharya's desire for a united worldwide preaching organization to expand Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, Srila Prabhupada founded Iskon as a distinct branch of the Brahma Gaudi Madhva Sampradaya. Therefore, he is the founder Acharya of ISKCON. A. Srila Prabhupada is the foundational Siksha Guru for all ISKCON devotees because he has realized and presented the teachings of the previous Acharyas of the Brahma Gaudiya Madhu Sampradaya appropriately for the modern age. B. Srila Prabhupada's instructions are the essential teachings for every ISKCON devotee. Go ahead. See, Srila Prabhupada's books are the embodiment of his teachings and should be accepted as a standard by all future generations of ISKCON. D. Srila Prabhupada should be worshipped daily by every ISKCON member. E. Every ISKCON spiritual master is responsible to guide his disciples to follow Srila Prabhupada's instructions. As founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada gave directions for management, principles of cooperation and other practical guidelines which from the basis and inspiration for, for sorry, which form the basis and inspiration for ISKCON's policies. G. Srila Prabhupada established the governing body commission to execute his will following the order of the previous Acharya. Alright, so this is from the GBC, this is statement why we should accept Srila Prabhupada as the Shiksha Guru. And when we give initiation in ISKCON, we should understand the, the initiation is to connect us to Srila Prabhupada, not that we become the property of a, the Guru, and if the Guru leaves ISKCON, we leave ISKCON. That's very wrong. We should vow never to leave ISKCON. Even if, the go even if the person who gave us Diksha does leave, we don't leave, we stay because Prabhupada's here. One should not accept a spiritual master without following his instructions. So if you're going to follow his instructions, you have to know what his instructions are. And if you don't read his books, you won't know what his instructions are. Can someone read? Rakshim Prabhu, you're back in the room. Yes. As one advances in devotional activities, the process becomes progressively clearer and more encouraging. Unless one gets this spiritual encouragement by following the instructions of the spiritual master, it's not possible to make advancement. Therefore, once development of a taste for executing these instructions is the test of one's devotional service. Initially, one must develop confidence by hearing the signs of devotion from a qualified spiritual master. Then, as he associates with the devotees and tries to adopt the means instructed by the spiritual master in his own life, his misgivings and other obstacles are vanquished by his execution of devotional service. Okay, so this is pointing out about following instructions, right? We want to follow carefully the instructions of the spiritual master. Then, follow the instructions. The idea is that we will remember Krishna. The famous verse here, Krishna is the origin of Lord Vishnu. He should always be remembered, never forgotten. All rules and prohibitions in the Shastra should be the servant of these two principles. Two principles, always remember and never forget him. So this is the idea. This is the Guru's most essential order. 
another order from the Guru. Someone can read? Charyananda, would you like to read? Yes, Charu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, go on. There are many regulative principles in the Shastras and directions given by the Guru. These regulative principles should act as servants of the basic principle. That is, one should always remember Krishna and never forget him. Never forget him. This chanting of 16 rounds is absolutely necessary if one wants to remember Krishna and not forget him. Of all the regulative principles, the spiritual master's order to chant at least 16 rounds is most essential. Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Madhyalila 22.113, verse 24. Okay, so very clear. Chanting 16 rounds. Go on, Prabhu, you could read more. Everyone begins his devotional life from the new neophyte stage. But if one properly finishes chanting the prescribed number of rounds of Harinam, he is elevated step by step to the highest platform, Uttama Adhikari. Nectar of Instruction, text 5, put forth, text 3. When one fully engaged in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, he gradually realizes his own spiritual identity. Unless one faithfully chants the Hare Krishna Mantra, Krishna does not reveal himself. Nectar of Instruction, text 5, report, page 57. Okay. So, some nice quotations there, references from text 5 about the chanting of the Holy Name. That simply by chanting, then we can understand what, what is our spiritual identity. Krishna can reveal himself to us also. We have to make the effort to complete the 16 rounds. Very important. That's the minimum, six, 16 rounds. We should try to chant more. Someone else read? How about we go to, um, yes, Ananda Vilasa, carry on. Yes. Uh, it, should I read uh, only the English verse? Uh, simply by offensively, offenselessly chanting the holy name of Krishna once, a person is relieved from all the reactions of a sinful life. One can complete the nine processes of devotional service simply by chanting the holy name. Purport, out of the nine processes of devotional service, kirtana is very important. The other processes should be executed, but they must be preceded and followed by kirtana. Bhakti Sandarbha 173, Chaitanya Charitamra, Bhaktiya Leela 15. Uh, Alright, some interesting information about the chanting of the Holy Name. Why the chanting is so important. That simply by chanting, it, it, it completes the nine processes of devotion. And then Prabhupada also wanted every program, all the pro deity worship and classes and so on, there should be kirtan first and afterwards. Before the class, kirtan, after the class, again, kirtan. This was the program. This is the usual program. Very important. Worship the deity, kirtan. Kirtan, it's always kirtan. Kirtan, very powerful. Hmm? Another quote Prabhu was reading, can continue. Uh, yes, Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. Of the, nine, uh, of the nine different types, the most important of all, chanting of the holy name, uh, chanting the holy name of the Lord without offenses, if one chants, he gets the most valuable ecstatic love of Krishna. 
Of the nine processes of devotional service, the most important is to always chant the holy name of the Lord. If one does so, avoiding the ten kinds of offenses, one very easily obtains the most valuable love of God. Okay. Yeah. So chanting the holy name, the Guru's most important instruction. Would someone like to explain this analogy which is given in the nectar of instruction? Anybody like to try and give an explanation? Krishna Vijay Prabhu, we haven't heard from you for a while, yes. The jaundice is compared to like material disease. So uh, when somebody is suffering from material disease, uh, then even if you give him a sweet like rock candy, it will taste bitter. So because he's in uh, like addictive condition. So one who take Krishna consciousness under the guidance of his master by practicing regularly Krishna consciousness, he will uh, he will come out of the addictive condition and uh, and he can cure and then. We can taste uh, the holy name as like, uh, which is as sweet as the sugar. So the remedy is the remedy for for jaundice. The holy name. More chanting, right? Yes. As mentioned by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, in the Sisastakam, Cheto Darpana Marjanam. So why do people not have a taste for chanting the holy name? What's the problem? Uh, because maybe we are too much attached to material things, too much sinful activities we are doing. As uh, Krishna mentioned that in Bhagavad Gita that those who are sinful, they don't come to Krishna consciousness. Uh, for them it's difficult to utter the name of Krishna. Okay. So the, there are many different things in the heart which are obstructing our taste for the holy name. Right? These are these are called anarthas. Yes. And there are different types of anarthas. Would you be familiar with what kind of anarthas are there in the heart? Um, yes, like lusty de desires, greed. Um, material like, uh, desires, right? Material yeah. desires for for um, what? No, no, no. For insignificant material things. Maybe a new car. <laughs> maybe maybe a new job. Maybe a, you know, <laughs> material desires, endless material desires. Some other things in the heart. Someone like to contribute here? What are the anarthas in the heart? Anyone? Come, growth, look, move, mat, mat, mat. Well, Prabhu mentioned, he mentioned one of the problems is maybe due to our offenses. So in which, what ways are we offensive? What kind, different kinds of offenses are there? Vaishnava Prabhupada blasphemy devotees. Okay, that's one. We may offend the devotees, right? And, and then another one? Dham Aparat. Hmm? Dham Aparat, do I offend the Dham? Okay, you may offend the Dham. If you're living in the Dham, you may offend the Dham, you may commit offenses against... What, maybe, what would you do? What would be Dham Aparat? How could you offend the Dham? You have Yogya Vinay, uh, Yogya Danishta Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Seva Aparat is also there. Okay, we were talking about Dhamma Parad. How could you offend the Dham? 
All right. Just if you think of it like some material place and you don't give it proper respect, you may not appreciate that you're in the holy dam. All right. And you may blaspheme the residents of the dam. You don't recognize that you're in a holy place and the residents of the dam are actually all special people. We should just, even the animals, even the plants and trees, the residents of the dam, respect them. So there's dam aparad, there's Vaishnava aparad. Any other aparad? Offenses to the holy name. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, Nama Parat. Right. Do you say the ten offenses every morning? Mataji? That was a question. <laughs> uh, I actually read it out. I do not remember everything. You read, you read it out? Okay, very good. You read it? You know there are ten, how many offenses to the holy name? Ten offenses. Ten offenses, right. So there's Nama Parad, Dhamma Parad, Vaishnava Parad. What else? Seva Aparad Seva. Seva Aparad. Who are you doing Seva for? For the pleasure of truth. Huh? I'm sorry, can't hear you. Seva But who who are you doing seva for? For Krishna. In what form? By cooking, by deity Right, deity, deity, in your deity worship, you may commit offence. So that, that's very, that's a, a problem. If you worship the deities and you do some offense in the deity worship, so these are all different apparats and we have to want to nullify the effects of these apparats. How to overcome deity worship offenses or Vaishnava? Chanting of the holy name, very effective. So people who worship the deity, they have to chant the holy name. They have to be very careful and chant. Sometimes people think, oh, I worship the deity, I don't need to chant Hare Krishna now. I just worship the deity, I don't, do, I don't chant the holy name. And so then they, they make offenses and they don't counteract the offense, they don't atone for the offenses because they don't chant. So it's very important in worshiping the deity, we unknowingly we may commit offence, we have to chant the holy name to make up for it. We may offend the devotees, we have to make up for it. We have to offer obeisances to the devotees, these kind of things. So setting up offences, they're, they're one of the anartas in the heart. And then of course material desires are there in the heart. Asat. Krishna, right? Attachment for the asat, for the temporary, for the material. These kind of things, anatta. So we have to overcome these things by chanting and by developing chant. With, without chanting, how can we develop the taste for the holy name? It will take some time, gradually. So this is the verse. Right? Sat Krishna nam charitadi sitapya vidya pito patapta rasanasya naruchikano kinva darad anudinam kalo seva jastva swadvi kramad bhavati tadgadamula hantri. Right? Translation someone read? Um. The holy name, character, pastimes and activities of Krishna are all transcendentally like sugar candy. Although the tongue of one 
expected by the jaundice of avidya, ignorance, cannot taste anything sweet. It is wonderful that simply by careful chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within his tongue and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. Nectar of Instruction, text 7, page 66. Thank you, Prabhu. So there are stages in chanting the holy name. Who can tell me the, the three stages in chanting the holy name? This is a question in the closed book. Okay. Just go to Yogya Dhanish uh, Prabhu. Uh, yes, Maharaj. The first stage is Nama Prat, and second uh, Nama Bhas, and third stage is Shuddha Nam. Okay. Thank you. So, at what stage can one, can Maya not disturb a devotee? At what stage do we need to be, Maya will not disturb a devotee? Nama stage? I guess it's Shudhanam. <laughs> at the stage of Shudhanam. Sri Chandrika Mataji, go on, you wanted to say something here. Uh, is it uh, Bhava stage, Maharaj? Sorry? Bhava stage. Bhava stage. Yes. At the Bhava stage. If you get to the Bhava stage, then Maya won't disturb you. Right? If you can get that far. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's not easy. We have to get through Anartha Nivriti. That's a big challenge, to get through Anartha Navriti. Once you get through Anartha Navriti, then they say it goes very quick. Then, you know, Nishta, Ruchi, Asakti, then get to ba But getting through Anartha Navriti is difficult. We have to know all these different Anarthas, we have to get rid of them. Someone can read? Lila Madhu, Lila Lita Mataji, carry on. Mataji, would you, would you read your, your music? Yes, yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. Effectively advancing and developing attachment and love, fulfilling the Guru's most essential order in rounds. One chance, if, sorry, if one chance, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra mantra offenselessly, carefully avoiding the ten offenses, he can certainly be gradually elevated to the point of understanding that there is no difference between the holy name of the Lord and the Lord himself. One should know for certain that without chanting the holy name of the Lord offenselessly, one cannot be a proper candidate for advancement in Krishna consciousness. Nectar of Instruction, Text 5, Purport, page number 50. All right. So if we can understand that the Lord is not different from His holy name. We say, Kali Kale Nama Rupe Krishna Avatar. In the Kali Yuga, the Lord comes in the form of His holy name. But we have to chant the name, the pure name, not Nama Bas, not Aparad, not Nama Aparad. The, the, it should be the, the pure name of the Lord. Then we can know the Lord is there. We have to come to the pure stage of chanting. How can we chant offenselessly? What do we now need? Water. Dina Pavana, do you want to answer that? Clear, Prabhu. Can we go back to that Madhiji who read and ask her? Yeah. Um, Lita Madhuri, Lita Madhuji. Yes, Prabhu. Offenseless, I could uh, uh, attain that offenseless chanting. You have to keep on chanting, Mara. That's my understanding. Constant chanting, more chanting. Yes. 
Yes, as we have discussed in the previous uh, example or jandis, obviously if we take sugar can uh, juice, definitely there will be a stage where there, we will be reaching the stage. Okay. Where we can uh, get the taste. Same way, if we continuously chant, definitely we can attain the subconscious chanting also. Okay, very nice. Yeah, more chanting, continuous chanting. Right? Bhakti Vinod Thakur is describing power of the holy name. Someone like to read? Krishna Vijay Prabhu, do you want to read this? Okay, bro. The holy name, like the sun, dispels the darkness of illusion. However, sometimes clouds are missed cover the sun the viewer so that only a portion of light comes through. In the same way, when ignorance and anathas predominate, the sun of the holy name becomes covered and only a portion of the full effect of the name is felt. Right? So the effects of the anarthas and the ignorance covering the holy name, we're not getting the full benefit of the holy name. Continue reading, Prabhu, can you? Please continue. Yes, ma'am. When the serious student takes shelter of a bona fide guru, by force of, of his effective spiritual practices, he can remove the obstructions blocking the sun, the holy, and the clouds and mist go away. Brilliant sun of the name becomes visible and bestows upon the devotee the pressure of love of God. So what are these effective spiritual practices? Could you tell us what are these effective spiritual practices which will remove the obstructions? Um, like uh, offenses towards white devotees, the vice devotees, sinful activities, um, yeah, I'm too much attached to material. Well, those are the things we want to remove, but how do we remove them? By um, engaging constantly in the holy name, chanting and uh, practicing devotional service. Okay, by more chanting, by doing more service, by doing sankirtan. So, Maharaj, we've got about um, five minutes left. You've got three hands up for some... All right, we'll take, take some questions. Would you take them now? Yeah. Um, all right, we've got one hand up now. Can we get it to Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu then? Thank you, Maharaj. Pranam, Maharaj. <coughs> Maharaj, I have a question for offense, as you discussed earlier. It may not directly from our today discussion, but it's like uh, when doing uh, Tulsi Parikrama every day, we chant this mantra, Yani Kani Chava Pani. Is it to nullify our offenses or it's a prayer mantra? Will it nullify our offenses? It's a prayer. Yeah, it's a prayer. But the effect of the prayer is it does take away sinful reactions. Just the, the effect of circumambulating Srimati Tosi Devi can have that effect, that it can nullify our different sins. So like we can pray to Tulsi Motakni, if not day to day, knowingly, unknowingly, we may commit so many offenses, so we can pray to him, Tulsi Maharaj, to nullify our sins. Pray to Tosi? Yes, well, uh, generally we, we want to give service to Tosi. We, give, we do service for Tosi. You could do, for example, you grow Tosi and you water her and you also worship her and you offer obeisances to her and you circumambulate her. And so this is all different types of devotional service in relation to Tosi Maharani. 
And by serving Tosi, so the effects of because Tosi is a pure devotee, so by serving her, our sinful reactions are reduced and nullified. As it is said, Mahat Sevam Dwarama Horvimuktes. By serving the great souls, the Mahatmas, it opens the doors to liberation. So Tosi Maharani is like that. She's, you know, the pure devotee of the Lord, and she's in the form of the Tosi tree for the service of Krishna. So we take shelter of her by giving service. But a devotee should, we shouldn't ask, it's not very good to just worship Tosi to ask her to take away our sins. Rather we ask Tosi to give us love for Krishna. Right? When we do the Tosi Arti, we think, I beg you to make me a follower of the cowherd damsels of Braja. Please give me the privilege of devotional service and make me your own maid servant. This very fallen and lowly servant of Krishna prays, may I always swim in love for Sri Sri Radha and Govinda. So that's how we worship Tosi. We don't ask her, take away my sins. No, some people do that. That's material. That's not a spiritual desire. We simply want devotional service. You know, I used to hear confession when I was in the Christian church, Maharaj. Uh -huh. And it was very much a mood of people would come to confession just to be relieved of the things, the bad things they'd done. And then, you know, the very next week you would hear the same voices through the confessional wall again. Um, confessing the same things that they did the week before and asking for absolution. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, it must be about the mood in which we pray and that we should be serving first um, in a mood of love. Mm. Yeah, we're not, you know, Krishna consciousness is not some material religion, right? We want to transcend the material energy. We want to understand the goal of actual religion is to develop love for God. So, you, you know, you don't worry about your sinful reactions. Just worry about being a devotee and developing love for God, love for Krishna, and love for Krishna's devotees like Tosi Maharani. So simply by serving Tosi, automatically your sinful reactions will all be nullified. The more, you're in, the more you're serving Tosi and you're worshipping her, then your sins will automatically be nullified. Why? Because worship of Tosi, worship of Krishna and Tosi, it's not material. It's on the spiritual platform. And on the spiritual platform, there's no karma. It's above karma. Karma is on the material platform. So come to the transcendental platform and you don't have to worry about all your past karmas and things. We want to be transcendental. That is pure religion, pure love for God. Otherwise, just simply saying, oh, take away my sins, that's the mode of goodness. It's material. It's a mode of goodness, but it's material. We want to be transcendental. The problem with being in the mode of goodness is that sometimes you can be also in the mode of passion and ignorance. And as, as uh, Krishna Keshava Prabhu said, you know, you, if you can get relief for your sins, then you'll do more sins. Then you'll worship Tosi to take away the sins. <laughs> it's, this is not... That's not pure love. That's not pure devotion. We're teaching pure devotion, pure loving devotion. Is it clear? Does it make sense? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj.
Raj, can we take one more question from um, his hand was up a minute ago. Chidan underneath my, you had your hand raised. We hadn't heard from you for a while. Maybe he's gone. No, he's there. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, we can hear you. Hare Krishna. Um, I just had a, a small clarification. Um, when you're talking about the bhava and stuff like that, you're talking about stages of devotional service. Um, I've heard that even at the stage of bhava, one can fall down and you may not reach your final goal. So, how does one understand that? I mean, is it like every single stage is a huge pitfall? And what what kind of hope can we expect for all of us if we see that even at the stage of bhava, one is susceptible to fall down? Well, Madhiji said that you couldn't fall down at the stage of bhava. I, it may be, I, I thought maybe, I thought, what's it, Bharat, Bharat Maharaj was up at bhava and he, he got attached to the deer? Yes, Maharaj. He, he was already very advanced, you know, he was really advanced. He was up to the stage of Baba. But you see, Krishna didn't let him fall down, really. Krishna gave him remembrance of everything. That he became careless. So Krishna used him to teach him, to teach the lesson. And... Uh, how do we relate it to us? When we compare to people like them, they're also exalted and we, we are such minute living beings and we are prone to so much more uh, offenses and more more possibility of falling down. So, well, uh, we, we have to always pray to Krishna. Just like I remember even Srila Prabhupada at one point, Srila Prabhupada said, he said, he said, you see people are worshipping me. He said, you know why they're worshipping me? He said, because I don't, I, I don't fall down. And he said, I'm always praying to Krishna. Don't let me fall down. So if, you, if, if we do like that, if we also pray to Krishna, please protect me, please don't let me fall down. Lord Chaitanya was even going through the forest and he was chanting to Krishna, Rakshamam, Krishna Krishna Pahimam, Krishna Krishna Rakshamam. And so we can also pray to Krishna, please protect me. And uh, when Lord Chaitanya embraced the leper Vasudev and cured his leprosy, then the leper Vasudev said, you know, he said, now you've rejuvenated my body and made my body strong and healthy. He said, I may, I may become interested in material life and think about sense gratification. He said, what should I do? So Lord Chaitanya told him, he said, yeah, you must constantly chant Hare Krishna mantra and you should preach Krishna consciousness. So if we're always chanting and preaching, you won't fall down. That's the fact. If you keep chanting and preaching, you're not going to fall down. But if you stop, if you deviate, if you go away from the chanting, you give up the preaching, then you can, then you're fallen. And so, we just have to hold on. Hold on to the lotus feet of Krishna and you won't fall down. Take shelter of Krishna, take good shelter and you won't fall down. Guaranteed. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, so we, we have gone over time today, so I know there's a few more hands up, if you could put them on the group, um, because we're going to have to use this Zoom ID in a short while for another class. Um, so please put any more questions on the group. Just before we go, um, a note on your closed book test. Two things actually, is one on the closed book test and one on the shlokas. So on page 120 and 121 of your fifth edition handbooks, you will see a series of questions. The Purva Swad Yaya, which is the preliminary self-study questions for closed book assessment. Please go through those questions. There's reference to which texts you can find those answers. All the questions for this first part will come from these pages.
together with the analogies on page 122. You should learn all of those analogies. The closed book test is likely to be sometime next weekend, probably Saturday or Sunday morning. If that's not convenient for any of you, please reach out to me, I'll arrange us another time for you. It's going to be a timed paper. The reason it's next weekend is because we have a final class for NOI this Saturday, and then you're starting Bhagavad Gita on the Monday, so we need to give you a little bit of time for preparation. So please bear that in mind. I'll keep reminding you. Please learn all the, close, the answers to the closed book questions on pages 120 and 121, and the analogies on page 122 of the fifth edition handbook. Now on shlokas, I know we're going to do some shloka recitations, but I'm going to also going to do something else because there's quite a lot of people on this group and it's going to take a long time to get through all the shlokas. So I'm going to allow you to self-record yourself, to record yourself on a video using your computer with your eyes shut. So I must be able to see your face with your eyes shut whilst you are reciting the shlokas. You can make a recording and you can upload them to a link I will send you today. It's a OneDrive link, it's a shared link. You'll be able to, you'll have access to upload them directly from your computer. That, that means I have flexibility around actually um, hearing those shlokas and marking them. And then if there's any problems with any of those, I will come back to you. That way it saves me time and those of you who, who are flying through them can just get through them quickly without having to wait to book a time with me. Um, all right, so by the end of today, I'll share that link. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for a really nice class today. I'm sorry about not being able to get in at the beginning. <laughs> Zoom kept throwing me out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you.